Elsa Schiaparelli, a prominent figure in the world of fashion during the first half of the 20th century, was known for her innovative and often surreal designs that pushed the boundaries of traditional fashion. Born in Rome in 1890, Schiaparelli moved to Paris in the 1920s, where she would establish her namesake fashion house and become one of the most influential fashion designers of her time, rivaling even Coco Chanel. Her work was heavily influenced by the Surrealist movement, and she collaborated with artists such as Salvador Dali and Jean Cocteau, incorporating their art into her designs. Elsa opened the Maison Schiaparelli in Paris in 1927, which she successfully ran from the 1930s to the 1950s. Starting with knitwear, the designer's collections were famous for their surreal and eccentric elements. In her collections, Elsa Schiaparelli touched on unconventional themes, such as the human body, insects, etc. She favored bright colors, including shocking pink. Schiaparelli collaborated with Salvador Dali to outfit Wallace Simpson, the Duchess of Windsor, in the then scandalous lobster print dress created for her photo session before the wedding to the abdicated King Edward VIII. The brand Schiaparelli was reborn in 2018 and today has once again become one of the most famous haute couture houses in Paris, with its head office on Place Vendôme. A few words about where Elsa Schiaparelli lived at different times. In historical times, royal nurseries were located along Rue de Berry. Later, countless townhouses, luxurious residences of the elite, and great mines were built here. Among them in 1871 was Princess Matilda, daughter of Prince Jerome Bonaparte, historical daughter-in-law of Napoleon III. As Elsa Schiaparelli believed, fate led her to 22 Rue de Berry in the 8th arrondissement of Paris. She was a distant relative of Princess Matilda. Besides, 2 plus 2 equals 4, which is the designer's lucky number. Therefore, the profoundly superstitious Elsa immediately bought the building in 1937 and turned it into a creative club for Hubert de Givenchy, Salvador Dali, and herself. Elsa Schiaparelli moved into this Parisian house in 1937. It is the third residence for which she has collaborated with Jean-Michel Franck, the father of modern interior design and the renowned Janssen Company. Although Schiaparelli was sociable and Frank was modest, they successfully collaborated and maintained good relationships. Although Jean-Michel Frank's interiors are usually associated with shapes and textures rather than color, he sometimes added rich hues to his work. He had his shop on Rue Faubourg Saint-Honoré, where some lampshades were made in unusual shades of green, yellow, and red, which violated the designer's rule that lampshades should always be simple and inconspicuous. He understood that bright colors work well in a white interior. During the period when Jean-Michel Franck opened his new store, Elsa rented a vast apartment on Rue Barbet de Jouy in 1931. The upstairs dining area gave off a supper club vibe with banquettes and black, lacquered directoire-style chairs next to black lacquered square tables. In his memoirs, Jean-Michel Franck says he first saw banquettes upholstered in blue chintz. The walls and chairs were minimalist white, the latter with extravagant white rubber cushions. In the Schiaparelli living room on Boulevard Saint-Germain, where the designer moved in 1934, bright accents perfectly complemented the white and almond green plaster. There was a stylish orange leather sofa, black rubber curtains, and chairs upholstered in yellow and white chintz. When decorating the bedroom, Elsa used the same bark fabric she sewed dresses for her collections. Important interior details of a house on Rue de Berry. Schiaparelli's Paris apartment 
was located in a fashionable area of the city, serving not only as her home, but also as an extension of her creative expression. The apartment was a gathering place for artists, writers, and intellectuals of the time, reflecting the vibrant cultural milieu of Paris between the wars. Schiaparelli's flair for the dramatic and the whimsical was evident in her décor, which blended opulent traditional elements with the avant-garde. She filled her living space with artworks, including pieces by her artist friends and furniture that often had a surreal twist, mirroring the themes seen in her fashion collections. Less modern and spacious than the apartment on Rue Barbet de Jouy or Boulevard Saint-Germain, the 18-room hotel at 22 Rue de Berry demonstrated the evolution of the Elsa Schiaparelli style, which was acquiring its unique character. Enjoying vibrant hues, chic furnishings, and a classic and contemporary style, Elsa showcased her love of fashion and art. Despite the meteoric successes of her rival, Coco Chanel, Schiaparelli maintained her status as fashion queen from the 1930s to the 1940s. The interiors were known for their bold colors, luxurious fabrics, and eclectic mix of styles, from Baroque to modernist. Schiaparelli was not afraid to mix patterns, textures, and periods, creating an environment that was as much a work of art as the clothing she designed. Notable features of her apartment included a shocking pink salon, a nod to her signature color, which she dubbed Shocking Pink, and various pieces of custom-made furniture that blurred the lines between functionality and sculpture. The white and gold boiserie of the Grand Salon was covered with 18th-century Chinese tapestries taken from Boucher cartoons, with bookcases in all corners in the shape of white and gold pagodas. Upholstered furniture, scarlet bergere, and lilac silk sofas provide an exquisite backdrop for Elsa's eclectic collection of curiosities from Egypt and China, and examples of 18th-century cubist and surrealist art. Her apartment also served as a salon in the traditional sense, where ideas and creativity flowed as freely as the cocktails. It was a space where the boundaries between fashion, art, and life were seamlessly blended, much like Schiaparelli's own approach to design. She believed that fashion was not just about clothing, but about an attitude towards life, a philosophy that was clearly reflected in her personal living space. Throughout her career, Schiaparelli rubbed shoulders with the greatest artists of her era, Diego Giacometti, Leonor Fini, Man Ray, Salvador Dali, and Jean Cocteau, creating poetic fashion and discussing creative ideas in a designer salon filled with their art. The eclectic decor reflects Elsa's unique sense of style and imagination. What happened to the house after the death of the great fashion designer? Today, only memories remain of the Elsa Schiaparelli residence. In 1992, François Hallard was invited to photograph the rooms of the designer's daughter, Gogo, Maria Luisa Yvonne Radha, created in memory of her great mother. The apartments have almost identical white boiserie, with gilded hung and panels in the Boucher style. Scarlet bergère, lilac canapés, and bright carpets ideally complement them. Eventually, these items ended up in the hands of admiring collectors. As most of the things were sold at auction by Elsa's granddaughter and actress Marisa Schiaparelli Berenson in the fall of 2013. After the demolition of private residences at 18, 20, and 22 Rue de Berry, including the Elsa Schiaparelli House, an office building designed by the architect and urban planner Maurice Novarina was built in its place. When the Doan family, famous Parisian hoteliers, purchased the property, they set about creating unique apartments, 
mixing classical and French decorative arts. The Hotel de Berry is the only hotel in Paris with a unique Novarina glass facade. It makes a unique interior design, slightly unexpected, but with its original atmosphere. The length of the exterior is 54 meters. Elsa Schiaparelli's Paris apartment was more than just a home. It was a manifesto of her vision, a physical space that encapsulated her belief in the fusion of art and fashion. It stood as a testament to her innovative spirit and her role as a pioneer in the fashion industry, bridging the gap between couture and artistic expression. Today, her legacy continues to inspire designers and artists alike, with her apartment remaining a symbol of her unparalleled creativity and her contribution to the cultural fabric of Paris. After taking a look at Elsa Schiaparelli's apartment, what are your thoughts? Is her home as spectacular as you thought it would be? Would you like to visit this apartment? If you enjoyed it, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and catch you in the upcoming video.